Everybody, God bless. Uh, we are going to uh, continue. Uh, so today we're going to go over, um, uh, we're going to continue on our uh, series, uh, God's Appointed Times, the Moedim, uh, the different feasts. Actually, they were talking about it in church because he was talking about uh, it's the 14th. We are going to be celebrating one of the feast days, right? We're going to be celebrating Shavuot, which is the day of uh, Pentecost, right? So in a way, uh, we're kind of getting a, we're kind of ahead of the curve because uh, the pastor they're going to start kind of uh, pushing more and start teaching more on, on the different feasts and the God's appointed times, which we have already been going over. So we're kind of like a little ahead of the curve. So today we are going over the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. Everyone can everyone say Yom Yom Kippur. That's Y O M. Yom. Everyone say with me Yom Kippur. Which in English is Day of Atonement. Okay, before we start, you know, there's a famous pastor um, that uh, said pretty much that all people in the world, basically, and he, I think he even gave it like a percentage, it's like 95 percent of all people are pretty much good, right? I mean, how many believe this, right? I mean, most of the people around the world are pretty much good. You know, you got your murderers and you know your uh, uh, people that are starting wars and stuff like that, but relatively everyone's pretty much good that's what he was saying right now and when i was reading this i was like and, and this is actually going to correlate what what the message is about but uh do y'all remember when uh when jesus was walking and then the, there was a man that came up to him and he said um uh teacher good teacher he said like that good teacher what must i do to inherit eternal life right do y'all remember that and well, in Mark 10, verse 18, that's verse 17. But in 18, it says, this is Jesus responding back to him. He says, uh, and Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good, but one. That is God, which obviously Jesus, Yeshua is God. So when I was reading this and I was like, so basically what he's saying <laughs> which is what, what this pastor was saying, that most people are good. He's absolutely incorrect. See, nobody is good. Zero percent of us are good. Why? Because we all fall short. We are all falling short of, of what we were supposed to be. Nobody's perfect, right? The only reason uh, that, you know, uh, so the only hope that we have is through faith in Jesus and Yeshua. Amen. So, a lot of times when, when, when we hear that, it's like, we're not good. We have to be repentive. We have to have an atonement for ourselves. And that's what we're going to go over, the Day of Atonement. Uh, let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get started with this. Let's bow our heads. Father, Most High, Creator of all things, we worship you. We, we glorify you and we bless you. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful privilege that we can come before you that we can open our Bibles and we can read your scripture, your word, which you are the word made flesh. And all of this, thank you through your Holy Son, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We worship you and we ask for your, your spirit, your Holy Spirit, your Ruha, to guide us and re let us receive revelation that we may learn and be obedient to your commandments. And we love you. In Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name we say, Amen. All right. So let's get started today. Now, um, and we we'll, we'll probably won't get through with uh, this uh, feast, but we are on, do y'all remember how many feasts they are, right? There are appoint, uh, appointed times or Moedim. They have different names, but it's basically God's appointed times. Remember, there is seven, right? Seven of them, okay? We've already gone up. We're on number six. So we are pretty much getting through them all, okay? This one's going to take place somewhere in like uh, September, October. It changes, but uh, we are in the fall feast, okay? <clears throat> day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Okay, so Yom Kippur is a day of atonement. It is a bittersweet day. Bitter as it, this is a day for afflicting oneself before the Lord, our Father Yahuwah, right? And today we look back at the suffering of our king, right, Yeshua, and what he endured for our sake. Sweet, because we know that he was the perfect sacrifice, 
the atonement of our sins. So, in short, this feast day or this appointed time basically is to abstain from working and it's to afflict ourselves. So, the little different from the other celebrations and other feast days was it's usually a time of joyous. What would you, do y'all remember which one we just went over a couple weeks ago? What's the one right before this one? It was the feast of trumpets. Yeah, Yon Teruah, right? And basically, remember, that one was uh, like an alarm, right? Remember we kind of were going over it? It was an alarm getting ready. Why? To wake up, to get ready, and basically to get ready for this day. That one was on, on the first day of the month. Ten days later, this, this feast day happens, okay? So it's basically wake up, get ready. Get, you know, let's get ready in repentance and everything because the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is, uh, it's, it's right there. It's right there near. So um, it's a, a, a way of afflicting. This day is a, a, a day of afflicting yourself, gathering together with other believers and offering a spiritual sacrifice. Uh, the English word atonement translates in Hebrew to uh, Kippur. Uh, young, that's where they come with Yom Kippur, which means purifying and cleansing. Okay? Everyone with me? I know everyone's tired for the weekend's memorial weekend, so graduationed out or whatever, but uh, we're ready, right? We're ready. This is important, okay? Okay, so let's go to our Bibles. Um, uh, let's go to Leviticus 16, 29. And we're going to read 29 through 31. Leviticus 16, 29. These are the days of our creator who gave his word. And each of them, believe it or not, each of these feast days are have a very, very prophetic meaning to it. Amen. Leviticus 16, 29. And I'll go ahead and read. Uh, amen. All right. It says, and it shall be a statue, a statute for you forever forever we're gonna go over that word a little bit everyone know what forever means what does it mean it means forever right that in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month so that's the seventh month right so it's somewhere like in october you know they go by a different little cal uh, calendar but it's somewhere in that area so it's gonna be the first month a uh, seventh month of in the tenth day uh you shall afflict yourselves and shall do no work neither the native nor the stranger who sojourns among you, which, like, live with you. For on this day shall atonement be made for you to cleanse you. You shall be clean before the Lord our Father, Yahuwah, from all your sins. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you, and you shall afflict yourselves. It is a statue forever. That word keeps coming up forever, so we're going to focus on that word. Uh, let's go to Leviticus 23. We're pretty close there. Leviticus 23, and it's going to be 23 to 24. Now, what we're going to read, it's, it's basically the same thing. Okay, it's the same thing that we read before. But the reason I like to read this is because I believe, and the Bible always says, you know, if you have two witnesses, you know, really, really pay attention. But see... God told Moses right here twice he's giving a commandment for them to practice Yom Kippur, the Feast of Atonement. Okay? And uh, Leviticus 23. I'll go ahead and read it. It says, Now on the tenth day of the seventh month, in, in the day of atonement, right there, it shall be for you a time of holy convocation, and you shall afflict yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord Yahuwah. And and you shall do no it, do no work on that very day, for it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you, for you before the Lord your God. For whoever is not afflicted on that very day shall be cut off from his people. That's not good. And whoever does any work on that day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall not do any work. It is a statue forever throughout your generations. In all your dwelling places, it shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict yourselves on the ninth day of the month, beginning at evening from evening to, uh, to it shall be, and you should keep a Sabbath. Okay, I said that a little wrong. But basically, right here, uh, it says on the ninth day from evening to evening. The reason why they say that is because, remember, in the Jewish calendar, they every day starts in the, like, uh, sunset, 
and then it ends on sunset. It's still 24 hours, but opposed to us, we do, you know, our day starts at midnight <clears throat> and ends, you know, they do it from, uh, it's like 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, and that's when it starts. Okay, so I read this twice because I want you to see how important it is that God not only told Moses once, but he told him twice that, hey, y'all need to keep, I'm giving you this celebration, this holy day. Remember, what do we say? Holy uh, Holiday, if you want to say holiday, deprives from the word holy day. I'm giving you this appointment so you can keep. Now, did he say, I want you to keep this, you know, until we go through the wilderness or maybe until you build a temple or something like that? No, he said, I want you to keep this for forever. Repeat with me, forever. Amen. Okay, throughout the generations. Now, some quick points that we see in Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Uh, obviously, we don't, uh, we're supposed to rest. Um, it's a regulation forever. Uh, uh, we're supposed to obey this no matter where we live. So, you know, and not just, if we're in Israel, right? It shall be a Sabbath, a complete rest. We're to afflict ourselves, and we're going to go over that in a little bit because th this, is, this is what's going to distinguish this day, this holy day, from the other ones. We've got to afflict ourselves. And in a little bit, we're going to go into what do we do? How do we afflict ourselves? And it is a complete day from sunset to sunset. So this is the most holiest day of the year. In, 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 in Israel, this was the holiest day of the year. All year, you know, they would celebrate their different feast days and, and stuff and things like that. But this day was considered the holiest day of the year. And we're going to see, we're going to go over it why. I believe that we should learn to observe uh, this as Christians today. Um, now, we don't obviously have to go out and make sacrifices, right? Uh, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times people might, come up to you you know now that we're starting to practice this more and more people might even look upon you strange and say like man what are y'all doing are y'all like a a cult or something like that you know you know one of the things i was talking to the pastor this morning <clears throat> is that you know we today in church you know the modern church you know uh, around the world uh, a lot of times uh, we we don't we don't really pay attention to a lot of things that we're supposed to be doing and a lot of times we don't do it because we don't want to kind of be seen as outcast from the rest of the world. But when I was talking to the pastor, you know, he made a good point. We're supposed to be outcast. We're supposed to be different from the rest of the world, right? And if we're just kind of blending in too much, and I'm talking about the church, if we're just blending in too, too, too much to the rest of the world, to the secular world, we're probably doing something wrong. God literally told us that we are separated from the rest of the world. The, the whole scripture of him trying to get Israel and giving them the, the commandments and the laws and stuff was to separate him from the, the, the people, the children of Israel, from the rest of the world, right? When we come into Christ, we are also a chosen people. We have to be separated. So basically what I'm saying is like, don't feel so like, oh man, I don't, I don't know we should be practicing these like Jewish holidays and stuff like that. I mean, those other churches don't do that and that's what we're going to go over okay uh obviously animal sacrifices i don't condone that no one should be going out and sacrificing animals now that's going to be another thing that people sometimes tell you you know they're like well why don't you sacrifice animals anymore you know and then you can be uh, uh, but they, they might throw you know you don't do that so why do you do one thing and not the other you know why are you doing part of it and not the other first of all we as christians and we know who is the ultimate sacrifice, right? Jesus, right? Yeshua, he was our atoning. Uh, he, he, he atoned for our sins, so we know that he was the ultimate sacrifice. We don't need to do sacrifices anymore. Why? Because he paid the sacrifice for us. But still, what about the people in Israel and Jew, you know, the Jewish people? You know, they don't make sacrifices either, right? I've mentioned this before. Why don't they make sacrifices? They don't believe in that Jesus was the Messiah, right? So they should still be doing sacrifices. They don't. I don't know if y'all have heard things on the internet and stuff like that, that, oh, you know, they're getting ready to build a third temple and they're, 
they found the the red heifers and stuff like that, and they're getting ready. Has anyone heard stuff like that? No? <laughs> I guess it's just me. But uh, anyways, it's a lot of uh, prophetic stuff about the end times and stuff like that. Point is, they don't do those things because they cannot do it any longer. Why? Because God also gave them regulations in order to make animal sacrifices. You have to have things like you have to have the temple or the tabernacle. You have to have a Levitical priesthood from Aaron, right? You have to have all these things in place in order to make a sacrifice. If you do that without any of these things in place, then they're really in trouble, okay? So that's why they don't do it. They don't do it because they're missing the tabernacle, they're missing the temple, they're missing the, the Levitical priesthood, they're missing all these things. And we don't do it, obviously, because we know that Jesus already died for us on the cross. Amen. So we accept the atoning sacrifice of the blood of Messiah Jesus Yeshua, and we receive his blood as the fulfillment of our forgiveness from sin. So, however, this yearly sacrifice is still commanded for us to keep, remember, forever. Even though, <clears throat> like I said, continuing sacrifices are no longer needed, like animal sacrifices, um, uh, we know that God doesn't change, right? He doesn't change, amen? Uh, and he, uh, I think this annual appointment, asking forgiveness for our sins that we commit together and against one another is still valuable to God. We, he, basically, he wants to hear our prayers, right? Um, you know, I was, when I was kind of going over this, and, and, and we've mentioned this before, uh, that how, our relationship with God is you can kind of kind of compare it to a, a marriage, right? Uh, and I know there's probably no one no one here. Everyone's single here, right? Except one. Right? Everyone else single? Okay. Well, it's okay. It, this is going to apply to you. One day, y'all going to get married too, and, uh, you know, this is going to apply. But you can still relate. Y'all have had boyfriends and girlfriends before, I imagine, okay? Not everyone, but, but let's just say. We, we know the idea, okay? All right. The relationship with God, all right? Our Father. Um, think of a relationship as it has to be two, two-sided, right? We are very, very, very good at asking. We're very, very good at taking, right? You know, our Father, He gave us everything because of His grace and His mercy, right? Uh and a lot of times I do feel like we don't do the same. It's kind of think about uh, think about how good a relationship would work if one partner was like always doing and always giving and saying I love you and and and, and giving you and taking you out and remembering uh, your anniversary or, 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 you know, just things like that. And but the other person never did anything, never cared, never paid attention to them, never gave them the time of day, you know. Uh, and they were actually, on the contrary, always asking, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you clean this or whatever? How long do you think a relationship like that would last? Or how healthy a, a relationship or a marriage would be? And it probably wouldn't last, right? Right, girls, if a guy was treating you like that, y'all probably wouldn't stay with him very long, right? <laughs> no, of course not, right? Uh, and guys too, right? If a girl's you know, just saying, hey, you know, you need to give, make work and make money and stuff like that, but that's it. No, right? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you know when to be like, okay, I'm out. All right. Um, it's the same way with our father. He gives us every, every day is a gift from, uh, from, from, from God. Every day is a gift from our father. Every heart, you know, our heartbeat, we breathe the grace that he gives us, the mercy, the love. And sometimes we don't really, do. in fact, like we don't show our love back a lot of times. And when I was reading this, I was like, you know, God gives us appointments. And, 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 and I'm going to paraphrase here, but sometimes I feel like God is like, look, I know you got your lives. You know, I know you got all these things going on, but I'm going to set a couple of appointment times throughout the year. And I just want you throughout the year to pay attention to me a little more, to, 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 to set aside a couple of things, maybe don't go to work that day. Maybe get off your phone that day. Maybe just just pay attention to me a little bit. 
That's all I'm asking, you know? And I believe that he set these appointment times throughout the year so we could kind of like stop what we're doing, stop the, you know, the busy, busy, go, 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 go life and say, whoa, today, tomorrow, or let's say tomorrow is the day of atonement. This is God's holy day, you know? This is his appointment. I need to kind of chill a little, right? I need to stop. I'm, I, I apologize, Father. This day, I'm going to praise you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glorify you. And I'm not saying that you have to be on your knees all day and, you know, just praising him. But to acknowledge, just, just to say, uh, you know, change it up a little, right? Just like in a relationship, pay attention to me, right? Right, babe? Like, when I pay attention to you. <laughs> sometimes I get that. So sometimes I'm on the go, the kids and, the, you know, work and this and that and stuff like that. And sometimes I need to just stop and pay attention, right? Amen. Everyone with me? All right, okay. So what is Yom Kippur? Okay, uh, Yom Kippur, basically I said it's considered the holiest day of the year. Um, this is the only time of the year when any person was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies in the temple. The Holy of Holies is uh, where the, like, the ark and stuff like that, God's presence was, okay? On this occasion, the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies several times First to offer incense, then to offer blood from the two atonement sin offerings, his bull and the people's goats, to temporarily cleanse his own sin and then those of the people of Israel. So um, the reason why they were considered this the, uh, the ho uh, holiest day of the year, because uh, when Israel, uh, the high priest, only one time a year could they go into the, the actual holy of holies. One time a year, one person was allowed to go into the uh, to the temple or the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies. And he had to make sure that he was right, too. You know, he had to sacrifice a bull, and then he had to sacrifice some uh, goats and stuff like that just to make sure if he went in that he was cleansed because if not, it dropped dead, right? Boom, right? Right in the presence of God. So it was very, very important. And uh, he would sacrifice a bull, and then he would sacrifice two goats. Um and we, we won't get really into that. I mean, there's a lot. Like, I would encourage you to go and read and study a little bit on the on Yom Kippur and the Day of Atonement because the goats have a lot of significance. But it's kind of it's kind of a uh, it's kind of strange how they do it. You know, they would actually uh, they would have these two goats and they would cast lots. Like, believe it or not, you know, like like dice or something. I don't know, like like uh, uh, like sacred Jewish dice or something. And and uh, uh, basically, one would be sacrificed, and one, the sins would be upon them, and they would they would send the the goat out until the uh, until the wilderness. That's where the the term. Have you ever heard the scapegoat? Scapegoat, right? That's where that term came from. One of the goats would be sent out to the wilderness to pretty much die. Uh, and some uh, translations of scapegoat, some would be called Azazel. Azazel. Have anyone heard that name? Basically, it's uh, another name for like Satan or one of his. But that's. Well, we won't get into that. It's really deep. But this was the practice. Now, think about it today. Today, because of Jesus, of Yeshua, we have the opportunity to be in his presence all the time. You know, sometimes I think about, like, if, if the uh, the people of Israel and the high priest could go look into the future and see where we're at today, they're like, what? Y'all can go into the Holy of Holies? Y'all can always be there? You know, not just one time a year. You don't have to sacrifice anything. You are, because we can. Because of Jesus' grace and mercy, all we have to do, we can always be in his presence. You know, we get down and we pray and stuff in the, in the spirit. We can be in his presence. We don't have to wait one time a year, right? Uh, and uh, so I think it's a, it's a privilege that sometimes we might even take for granted, right? So how much... Our Heavenly Father loves us. I want to ask you a question. How do we show our love to Him? You know? And we're going to keep going over this, uh, the Day of Toma. We're, we're still figuring it out. And like I said, we probably won't finish today. Look, we got 11 minutes. Okay? But it's an important question. How do we show? We know how He shows our His love, right? First of all, He died for us, right? He took upon all our sins and transgressions, right? Uh... He, through mercy and through grace, He loves us. So there's no question there. He loves us. 
how do we show our love to him? You know, it, it's something that sometimes we don't really think about it, right? Uh, maybe uh, what are some like pray, you know, obviously prayer, you know, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we might say I show my love by going to church, you know, or uh, reading, <clears throat> reading scripture, you know, worshiping, right? This is how I show my love, you know. Uh, and all those things are true. Anyone else have any other ideas? Like, how do we show our love to our Father? Fasting, okay. And that's going to be important in a little bit because the Day of Atonement is very, very big on fasting. Um, anyone else? Any other ideas? How can we show our love to our Father? G- hmm? Obeying His Word? Sacrificing our things, which also is very important to the Day of Atonement, basically denying the flesh, right? Okay, all those things are very important. They all kind of fall under one umbrella, like one word and then it's all. The way, I'm going to tell you right now, just write it down or write it down on your heart. The one way, the, the way to really show our love to our Father, to Jesus, is obedience. And I'm telling you right now, if you are obedient to the Lord, all these other things that y'all are talking about will fall in place. When you are obedient to the Lord, you want to pray. You want to read his word, right? You want to deny the things of the flesh. You want more of the spirit that he gives you. You want to worship him. You want to have a relationship with him. You want to take these days apart and say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to go to work today because Today is the Day of Atonement, and I'm going to dedicate this to you. Obedience. I'm telling you, if, you're, if you love the Lord, you will be obedient. And then you're like, how do I be obedient? By following his commandments, by reading his scripture. You know, that is how we show our love. Amen. How many want to be obedient? So let's go back to uh, atonement. And like I said, I'm only on a... Yeah, we're not going to finish. We'll, we'll, we'll finish. Uh, we'll continue this. We'll get through a little bit more. It says, so important. One of the important aspects of atonement, which is going to be different from all the other appointed times, all the other feast days, is uh, afflicting ourselves. So how, how, how are ways, uh, like Joel said right now, uh, denying the flesh? What are ways that we can do to afflict ourselves? And this is open. You know, this is not really a wrong answer. But what, what, what do you think when I say, okay, the Day of Atonement's coming up, uh, 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 Sammy mentioned fasting, which is very good. I think that's number one, right? But what are other things that we could do to afflict ourselves, to show God that we are denying our flesh? Huh? Of course, repent, repentance is, is all about this day, right? The Day of Atonement is repentance. We should I'll ask God, forgive me of anything that I've done for, I, as I forgive others. What else? Re- okay, reading his word. All right. But, but I'm saying, what do we do? Uh, how, how can I say? What do we do to afflict ourselves, right? Obviously, reading our word is a good thing, right? So I'll give you an idea. Like they said fasting, maybe not getting on social media. Maybe it's basically all the things that we like to do, right? We like to go what? You like to go shopping, right? Or you like to uh, uh, do certain things. Like um, some people like going to the gym. Like I know Isaiah likes going to the gym, right? Maybe that day he might be like, "Hey, I like doing this. I'm not going to do it today." For other people, maybe but going to the gym might be afflicting. So maybe like going to the gym will like I don't know. But uh, uh, like. What I'm saying is the things that you love, that you usually do, that you want to do, that the flesh seeks for, those are things that you should try to set apart, especially on this day. You know, fasting is very important, right? Fasting is the, a way of denying the flesh, right? I'm hungry. I want to eat. I'm not going to do it that day, right? Uh, so afflicting oneself, and I know there's a lot of other ways we can do it, uh, but to me, I think those are like the most common, like, going out shopping getting on your phone uh doing things like that fasting and things like that okay how many would be willing to do something like that right or you are scared like like i said before oh people are gonna look at you oh you're a cult you know you know this and that no tell them hey 
I follow scripture. This, this is a statue and a commandment forever. Just read them Leviticus 23, right? Okay. Uh, fasting is traditionally associated with afflicting oneself, which appears in scripture. In Psalms 35, 13, it says, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. Uh, so obviously King David's right here. He's saying well, one of the ways of afflicting himself was to fast, and that was another way of humbling yourself, right? We can already see this, how it works. Um, let's see. Uh, the Day of Atonement is basically like uh, also a day and a reminder of the father correcting us, right? Uh, when we have kids, like I said, no one has kids here probably except one. When we, when our kids, but but a lot of you are younger, so you probably know this from your parents. What happens when you do something wrong, right? When you get in trouble, right? You do something wrong. What do your parents do? You know, they correct you, right? Now, do they do that because they're mean? Or because, you know, they they just, you know, hey, I don't, I don't know, you, you, you know, this and that. No, they do it because they love you, right? Good parent, a good parent is supposed to correct their child, right? The same way our father corrects us. The Day of Atonement is a reminder. He's letting us know how imperfect we are. He's letting us know how much we have failed. He is letting us know how much we have transgressed, and He is letting us know that we need to repent constantly, you know? And basically, we know that our we have a good, loving Father, right? And a good, loving parent corrects His children. If not, they're going to be all over the place, right? Now, I know some of you all here are probably like, well, I never got corrected because I never did nothing wrong, and praise God, you know? But I know I was corrected a lot, you know? I even, my dad's still trying to correct me today. Believe that. He's trying to, like, punish me and stuff like that. This past graduation, I kind of messed up a little. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was a little angry. A short story. Uh, we're, we're not going to finish, but uh, I bought <clears throat> some confetti poppers, you know, for, like, graduation. I guess I got the wrong ones, and it was, like, uh, instead of confetti, it was, like, shot out, like, powder. Like, literally powder. So I gave one to my dad, and when he, he shot it, and pretty much he was like a smurf, you know? I was too, you know? It, 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 was, it was bad, yeah. And then we were all sweating already, so it was like sticking to you or whatever. I think it was a gender role, but they, 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 they got me. Don't go to Party City, you know? But anyways, he's still trying to correct me too. But he's a good dad. He's a good father, okay? But it was an accident, so... But, so a good father knows how to correct his children. Amen. We're going to finish up probably here, but I want everyone to go to the book of Isaiah. And we're going to read Isaiah chapter 53. And we're going to read Isaiah chapter 53, and we're going to read verses 4 through 7. <clears throat> and this is obviously Isaiah, prophet from you know, hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus, right? He's already prophesying about the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. And we're going to see how important it is for us and what he did for us uh, to pay atonement for our sins. Amen? Isaiah 53, 4 through 7 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. <clears throat> Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten, spent, smitten of Elohim our God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are here. We are healed. Hallelujah. And we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Sounds like how we are today, right? And the Lord, our Father Yahuwah, has laid on him the iniquities of all of us, all our sins. Everything that we've done wrong is laid upon Christ. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before the shears is dumb. So he 
opens not his mouth. Hallelujah. We praise a mighty God. The day of atonement is all about affliction and healing. A day of forgiveness through the blood and atonement so that we may walk uprightly and stay on the narrow path. Praise be to the Father for sending his Son, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, to be the perfect atonement and healing. Let us not forget what he did on that day. So we as Christians, to wrap it up, on that day, on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, it is a very, very, very important day. I think that we should plan accordingly and that we should study and look at these things because it is a day for us to pay attention to the Lord. Every day we should, but even his, this day even more so. Why? Because he said to do it forever. And I think as Christians, a lot of times we don't know about these things, right? And I think it's a part of deception. I think it's a lack of, of knowledge, remember? Uh, I think a lot of times... Uh, the word even says, uh, my, my people suffer for lack of knowledge, right? Or my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, I think that we are a generation ready and hungry for the spirit, ready for his word. But, but there are so many distractions, so many things going on in life that we don't pay attention. And, and through that, we become, we have that lack of knowledge and, and, and to that extent, a lot of the church today is going to be destroyed for lack of knowledge. We need to wake up. We need to start looking, looking to Scripture. And, and, and even what I'm saying today, I'm, not, I, I'm a person too. I make mistakes and things like that. Y'all saw the, the confetti thing. I make mistakes, right? <laughs> but I would advise you, look at it. Look at it for yourself. Go into Scripture pray about it ask the spirit to give you guidance you know and i know that the lord his word is always number one no matter what no matter what preacher or pastor or whatever if they tell you something and it's not in scripture then i would advise to move away because his scripture does not change his word does not change why because he is the word he does not change he's the same yesterday today and forever so i just want to let you know and tell you we will continue this uh, message but I just want you to know that pay attention to his word these appointed times the day of atonement is very important because it's all about forgiveness about repentance and about paying attention to our father for what he's done for us let us stand let us pray father most high Yahuwah we praise you and we glorify you. And we thank you, Father, for this wonderful privilege it is to be here in your presence. Today, we know that every day is the holiest day because we have the access to be in your presence always. And we thank you most of all for the atoning of your son, for the atoning of his sins on the cross. We know because of that sacrifice that we have the opportunity to be with you forever. We want to show our love. We want to show our love by obeying you and following your commandments, giving you the, the attention that you require because we know that you are all loving and you have given us grace and mercy. The least that we can do is give you what you desire, which is obedience to you always and to your word. We ask for your knowledge and for your spirit to guide us, to give us revelation, and that we may be separated and apart from the rest of the world. That we can be the chosen people that you have promised for us. We love you. We worship you. And we give you all the praise and glory. And in the, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, we say, amen. All right. Well, God bless y'all. And like I said, we will continue this lesson uh, because we got maybe halfway. So, Day of Atonement. And look into it, too. And we got our questions, too. Okay? Chapter 22. Everyone's going to have their questions. Chapter 22.